two German men defy the odds and call it Fußball. Uh, and then, of course, we had a bunch of German stuff. We had some Champions League. We had one Jesse Marsh getting a great victory, probably his first victory with a big team. He was all... Jetzt ist es ich gegen ihn oder euch oder egal. It's us against them. <laughs> Boom, and he pulled yeah. off us against them. Us wins, them loses. Um, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. We had... Uh, other than soccer, what the heck happened this week? Not much, right? It was just a soccer week. <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, yeah, well, I hosted a, a sleepover for nine hey. 13 year old nine 13 year old girls. So uh, that was, uh, that's a, that's a, that could take a podcast of its own. To I was going to say, that. that must be incredibly <laughs> trying. <laughs> yeah, it was very, uh, it was apocalyptic, yes. So give um, us a run. I'm just some dude, you know, like when I was in middle school or whatever, I guess the girls, because I would go to my friend's house and then their sisters have sleepovers. And, you know, they would do like a Britney Spears party or something like what? Give us a rundown. Give us a rundown of what like a 13 year <laughs> sleepover is like. It's, like. What do they do? Is it Ariana Grande? I'm so old and out of the loop. Ariana Grande. I uh, know. I don't See, think. I don't uh, know. I don't really, I mean, there's just a lot of TikTok, you know, there's a lot of production, wow. you know, back back then it was just consumption. Now there's production, like videos are constantly posted and created. And uh, oh, they're, they're making the, the TikToks. Yeah, yeah, they're making the TikToks. And um, it's just it's just a never ending stream of uh, of of content. Yes, that the, the girls... Well, the that's not a bad thing, right? To put yourself out there to be productive. It sounds like a productive thing to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, it's I not think, curing cancer, but it's certainly. Yeah. I I, uh, I I do say that all the time. If all that energy <laughs> was just focused on solving the world's problems, we may be further along with that. But uh, yeah. no, it's true. I mean, I agree. It's it's uh, it's certainly, you know, when I was younger. Uh, uh, it was uh, the the barrier of entry was so much higher, and you would really overthink everything you're doing. Now it's it's it is kind of I do kind of like this idea of just like oh just put it out there and see what happens. Kind of like we're doing with the the Schnitzel Boys. Yeah, yeah. Here we are, Schnitzel Boys. We got a couple of viewers with us live on Monday nights. Also available in podcast form. I'm gonna comment right now. Uh, comment on the post. Give us something to talk about. We'll talk about it. We, of course, have our own agenda as we have German stuff to do. Um, and, of course, we have a lot of American stuff to get to. Oh, America. America. Uh, whenever I press the exclamation point, that plays. So I need to. <laughs> oh, that was I need that to was not on, that was not on purpose. Okay, <laughs> no, I just wrote a comment with an exclamation point and just played that song. But it's all good. It's all good. All right. Do you want to? We, we usually do with Germany the first half and then America the second half, right? Yeah, America's sounds beautiful. good. Uh, if only there was a way to run down and organize if all only, sort of the German. If, if only, only there was. How could there yeah, be? How could there be? All right. We're just playing with you. I think we got a little something here. We're experimenting, but we'll see if this works. We'll see if the music is long enough. And <laughs> now it's time for the German soccer rundown. Some midweek action, Champions League action. Wolfsburg defeat Red Bull Salzburg 2-1. By mention, destroy Benfica 5 to 2, and Dortmund once again falling to Ajax Amsterdam 3 to 1, and RB Leipzig and PSG fought it out to a hard fought 2 to draw. Over to the Europa League, where Eintracht Frankfurt beat Olympiakos from Greece 2 to 1, and Bayer Leverkusen crushed Real Betis 4 to nothing. Uh, on Friday, match day 11 kicked off with Mainz and Gladbach finishing 1 to 1. Mainz scoring a goal against the run of play to steal a tie. On Saturday, Bayern defeated Freiboy 2 to 1 to finally end their unbeaten run. Armenia Wielefeld beat Stuttgart a goal to 1. Foul FL Bochum continues their run of form with a 2 0 victory over Hoffenheim. Wolfsburg continue their great form under new coach Florian Kofeld with a 1 0 win over Augsburg. And the big game on Saturday had Jesse Marsh's RB Leipzig defeat Borussia Dortmund 2-1. to 
On Sunday, Hertha tied Bayern 04 1 to 1, Cold and Union Berlin played to a 2 2 draw, and Eintracht Frankfurt capped off, capped off match day 11 with a 2 1 win over Goethe Fürth. And that is your German soccer rundown. Nice. All right, that worked. I tried that. You know, well timed too. That was quite. That was. Uh, <laughs> you'll never do that again. That's amazing. Yeah, well, I held out the end a little bit. Yeah, well, this will be like clockwork. We'll start timing this out really well. Great. Um. um yeah. What do you want to talk about? The uh, what is it with Dortmund and Ajax? I don't know. Um, it was four one, or it was four nothing last week, and then it was four one the week before. Uh, I mean, the Champions League games. You know, I guess the, the interesting thing is that, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, sorry, I was just permanently banned from the MLS subreddit. <laughs> I can't post there ever again, <laughs> so I have to go on and apologize. I try, I'm trying to get the word out here, and they're, they're mad at me. So I have to um, figure that out. Uh, uh, sorry, I was just a little sidetracked. Um the the uh, 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 RB Leipzig PSG game was a pretty cool uh, two two draw. Again, signs of Leipzig just going from strength to strength a little bit. Um, the uh, uh, Dortmund game was four nothing last week, and it was uh, uh, three one this week. Uh, I think the big thing with Dortmund is without Holland, are they even a winnable team? You know what I mean. Seems like it seems like no Holla, no no fun, no Holla, no party. Yeah, he's a lot of he's definitely a lot of their offense, and uh, he helped helped your boy Jesse out this weekend by not showing up. Uh, and, yeah, uh, um, yeah, big win, big win for Leipzig on Sunday. If we want to go backwards, it's uh, that was probably like you were saying Jesse Marsh's biggest biggest success so far. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like, uh, just to, just to touch on the the midweek again real quick. Wolfsburg won, so they're still in great form. So Wolfsburg's coaching change was great. Florian Kofeld is really, mm -hmm. like, he went from a relegation team, and then his his reward after relegating Blamen was to be given the keys to a Champions League club. <laughs> so he's, he got those keys, and he did well. Uh, and um, failing, failing, so, failing upward, fail, failing, failing. Upward. Another solid game from John Brooks. We'll maybe touch on him a little bit more later. But John Brooks, um, he uh, has been sort of getting back to his form, thankfully. And then, yeah, cutting over to the weekend, the big game was RB Leipzig against Borussia Dortmund. Now, RB Leipzig, since March, this season under Marsh, has not beaten a team of equal or greater value yet. They, they lost to Manchester City. They lost and tied to PSG. They lost to mm -hmm. Bayern München. They just lost to all the other teams that they themselves are in the same world as, that they have spent money to be in. So today was, or over the weekend, the win over Dortmund was a sort of a message to be like, okay, we can do this. Now, granted, Dortmund was without Holland again. And Jude Bellingham just is enough. And young Gio Reyna is still injured, unfortunately. So yeah. Dortmund has some injury problems. But, you know, that's... That's Dortmund's fault for being so thin and have not having any depth. Um, RB Leipzig with a, um, Christian uh, Christopher and Cuckoo. Is it Christopher or Christian? In Cuckoo, Cuckoo, the yeah. young French, the young French sensation, just just has been really going from strength to strength for that club. He had such a great game. Uh, did you see that double spinny move he did? He did. Yeah, <laughs> spin it back once, spin it back second, and hit the post. It's like, dang, like who needs? I mean, in a few months we might be talking in Kunku, not Holland. You know, uh, uh, what a great find uh, for RB Leipzig. The Red Bull scouting department strikes again. Yeah, he's with, been great uh, for them. Yeah, he's like eighteen or nineteen or something, crushing it. Uh, and they have a very dominant Tyler Adams, also having a great game. He is proven to be a man with a capital M. Uh, and he, um, he, uh, 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 he, he had like one or two, he, he had such a great assist there in the beginning that almost became a goal and he was all over that field. He just had a great game overall. And I think RB Leipzig could have, I think they got that goal was called offside. They had a few other opportunities. They were pretty, they, they were playing to their game 
the way they've been developing it, which is quick on the counter, quick quick turnaround, quick transition, and just getting it right up there, no nonsense, direct passing right into the box. And it worked. Dortmund couldn't handle them. So a great win overall for RB Leipzig, 2-1 to one over Dortmund. Yeah, and it was uh, Paulson, the old. He's been really, he's been really with them Since from, the from the really from the fourth division. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> uh, so it was great to see him get that goal, and he seemed yeah, yeah. seemed happy about it too. Yeah, he's a good fan favorite. I'm just happy all around. And in the in the in the post game interviews, Oliver Mitzlaff was on uh, Sports Studio, which is a big German sort of sports. Uh, Soccer broadcast Dilio thing, uh, one of those like it's like the it's like the German version of Sports Center kind of kind of, uh, or or it's the German version of the best damn sports show, which is an old show on yeah. It's more I was more the say, secondary one. It's really yeah. more of a it's more of a talk show soccer right. themed. Yeah, it's more that's a, that's what I remember the the Saturday Night Rundown used to be. You watch sports sports show to get the results and the highlights. Then you eat dinner. Then there's the Saturday night variety programming, whether it's Wetten Das or Verstehen Sie Spaß or one of those uh, <laughs> kind of family family variety mm-hmm. shows. And then afterwards, if you were old enough and you got to stay up, you would watch the sports studio where you would see highlights again, but with a little bit more analysis and and uh, some people some guests and and some some longer conversations so that was the saturday yeah, night they, the entire they, i guess it's the, the yeah it's tonight the, show of soccer <laughs> the, the yeah tonight kind show of with jay leto so. right no uh, but they had to be a christian strike on this past weekend but anyway they had oliver mitzlaff on who's the sporting director of red bull and red bull is like yeah i stayed quiet on all the criticism i've been a fan of jesse marsh the whole time and blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> you know even even though the it, yeah. whether he was you know whether he was speaking out of his butt or not uh, leads to be seen but all i know is the the pressure is a little bit off and i also doing my research i led the leipzig sports paper sport buzzer uh which is uh, the local sports paper. And pretty much they said that either it was Jesse Marsh, I believe, or someone from Red Bull said it went from not everything is bad to not everything is good, is the phrase. Mm. So essentially, it was like five alarm chili. It was like, yeah, nothing, we can't get this, we can't do that. Now that they're, now that they're winning and so forth, now it's like, okay, now there's still a couple things that still need to improve, but... So it's heading in the right direction overall. Uh, and RB Leipzig are now find themselves in fifth spot, uh, very close to the top four, which is definitely their minimum expectation as a top four top four place. And um, you know it's looking good. So we'll that's see. A, we'll see if they can keep a momentum going. That's a very German. That's a very German attitude, isn't it? It's like don't get too 100%. don't get too ahead of your. You know, don't you're not <laughs> never as good as the as you think you are. Never as bad as you think you are. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever, uh, and, and I don't know if you ever saw Arrested Development, they have that scene where they were excited that they went from uh, uh, like trash to don't buy or something. They had a big party. They're like, don't buy, don't buy, don't buy, which was an improvement for them. For them, uh, for sure. That's and that's funny. RB Leipzig. It's like we went from everything is terrible to we went from not everything is terrible to not everything is great. Yay. Like That's their upgrade. Um, so overall, well, well done for RB Leipzig. Uh, Bayern München uh, defeated Freiburg. Freiburg is no longer undefeated, so there are no more undefeated teams left in the Bundesliga. Freiburg losing two goals to one as the Bayern juggernaut continues. If they only um, lose, if they only lose to Bayern all season, they're doing pretty well, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, they're not doing bad at all. Uh, Wolfsburg got a goal with young Nemeka. Who was an English youth international that they converted to? Because he was a dual national, and now he was called in the Germany camp to represent Germany. Oh, that's he got right! A great yeah, goal over the weekend uh, to continue their winning streak. Ever since Florian Kohfeldt's been in, Wolfsburg has won each of their games, I believe. So they went from losing to winning like that. Is he the so number well nine? Done. Is he the number nine we need? Yeah, he's he's. I think he's actually his number is number ten. But he is a number nine, so I don't know yet. It's still young. He's only scored three goals, I think, for Wolfsburg. So we're, it's funny. We're, we're doing the Germany the same thing we do the U.S. It's like Rico Pepe, he's our savior, even though he's only played like 10 professional games in his life. Yeah, I mean, and I don't... The same thing with Nemeka. I don't think we need a savior, but we do need somebody who wants to be in the box, perhaps, like 
Timo Werner hanging out by the corner flag. Gnabry also yeah. more of a more of a winger, really. Somebody Timo there is Vanna. there is that spot in the middle. <laughs> Timo Vanna is slowly slowly becoming the German Josh Sargent. <laughs> wow, that so is, that is that's harsh. That's, low blow. That's, that's a little harsh on Timo, I would say. <laughs> that is hard. Well, yeah. you know, he's not Timo's not exactly number nine. He's sort of been hanging out in the wings a little bit. And, you know, sometimes he scores, sometimes he doesn't. You're right, it is harsh. Timo can be in better form. There was uh, uh, there was that cartoon in the, where was it, in a French newspaper? And there was a guy who was in, in front of a firing squad, and he was asked what his last wish was, and he said, I would like Timo Werner to shoot. <laughs> there you go. That's the kind of fun <laughs> ribbing that they... <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, that, that those great French. newspaper guys, those French, those boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I was gonna say. Speaking of French, this again, this is a little free for later. Uh, I'll talk about it later. But essentially, I was at the LA Galaxy game, and they have a young French striker named Kevin Cabral who was so close to scoring the whole game, mm. and I was just like, "He's gonna score! He's gonna score!" And spoiler alert, he didn't score. He did not. Mm. Uh, but then, but then again, that's another thing. Uh, okie dokie. Uh, the other big game is Bochum. Do you want to talk about that? Well, is it a big game? I mean, I would love to talk about that. I really, it seems <laughs> like it seems like I need to just sort of very cautiously perhaps adjust my expectations upward ever so slightly. I mean, I really mm -hmm. was down on them after the first few weeks of the season because it just really didn't seem like they had any kind of offense. Uh, uh, that would would uh, be enough to keep them in the league, but they've really found a way. And uh, on on the game on on Sunday, really went from a complete snooze fest for 55, 60 minutes. It really nothing happened, and then it just went complete, went totally off the rails. We had uh, uh, Soma Soma Novotny came off the bench out of nowhere. He's been he got relatively little time. In the in the second Bundesliga last year, and uh, hasn't played much this year either. And he came off the bench and scored the first goal, then got a penalty, and it was uh, um, things crazy went wild. Penalty, by the way, Grilich, crazy, yeah. Grilich, Grilich just shoves him for no reason. Like the penalty wasn't a foul. It's just after some sort of whatnot in the box. I think he lost the ball or something. Grilich, or they, or they run into each other or something. Grilich just stands up and just shoves him with his yeah. His I think arms. he took. I think he took offense to Novotny kind of you know wanting a penalty for that he really didn't deserve, and then yeah, that he but gave he, him one. Yeah, but then he then he just <laughs> gave one away, and uh, uh, yeah. And then no. and then okay, then riddle me this: Why did the goalkeeper take the penalty? Well, I mean, in retrospect, that clearly was a poor idea. Um, but he, you know, he took the winning penalty a week prior in the in the cup, and so I guess he, so was, he was feeling so he, was Manu, <laughs> he was letting it ride. He was feeling he was feeling emboldened, and then really shanked it over the crossbar in the worst way. The goalie, he's a, he ain't the, no hot York but My so God, I mean, the great, goalie, the goalie went completely the other way, and he just shanked yeah. it, and then and really made it much um, more exciting. Than it needed to be because Bochum was very much in control. Hit the we hit the crossbar and the post one time, and uh, um, but then in stoppage time, the goalie, the opposing goalie, came up to try and score the equalizer, and then what you very rarely see is was the empty net goal from yeah, scored it from was... scored from midfield. Yeah. So this is Hoffenheim now. So it's a Bundesliga game early in the season. I guess you have nothing to lose, but you don't usually see the goalkeeper being put up at the end like that for a game like that. Usually, only do see that for like semifinal appearances, things like that. I think but these more power days, to them. these days, if you're down, I mean, yeah, nothing, nothing to lose, and and it also doesn't happen all that often, surprisingly. But in this case, it did. No. The guy, the guy so took as a, a shot. Down, the, the keeper was in the box to do that last one equalizer. They missed it. Bochum's on a counter. The goal on the other side of the field is just wide open. So from 62 meters out, which I did not translate into yards, uh, that would be quite like 70 yards out uh, before the halfway line, 
He just kicks it, and so many times we have seen that, and it usually misses the goal. They just can't hit it on target. It goes over, goes over. But this one slowly and right in the goal, bounces, and boom, goes in the goal. Yeah. So it's Trickle, a goal from I mean, 62 meters away. Probably trickles, trickles in, one yeah. has to say. Like, it was <laughs> definitely was a very slow player. roller, but eventually it made it. It was looking <laughs> good from the beginning, and yeah, and a very uh, – uh, yeah, very exciting. And now I think twelfth place is that uh, is that yeah, where we're at? Twelfth or third? Twelfth or thirteenth? I mean, it really bodes well the way this team try this 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 team is uh, uh, just finding a way, scoring 12th, goals. Twelfth spot, twelfth place, uh, right right above Hertha and Eintracht Frankfurt and Stuttgart. I'm yeah, right. I mean, That's I still think good. I still think that is probably the highest will be this 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 year Big but positive if maybe let it ride let it ride <laughs> no I'm no I'm, uh, it's not all good no it's not all good stefan <laughs> even though even though we're, it was i guess it wasn't all bad before but now it's not all good it's still the the offense still look pretty sputtering for most of it but well they'll 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 find a way and i'm i'm excited it's still i was i was reading kicker today and they had a they had a uh, um a poll on their front page is Bochum and enhance does, Bo, does Bochum's presence enhance the Bundesliga? And it's like, why even, why even ask that <laughs> question? It's asking. like, how is that like, even? Is is it? It's like it's like you go to a party, be like, hey everyone, quick thing, let's just do a quick poll. <laughs> is it good that Stefan's at this party or not? Let's just do it. Let's just do a quick it's show like, of hands. It's like they got the points. They're, they're like, yeah. That's that is that's crazy. I mean, 75 percent of people said yes, but still, like, why? This goes back. I think this all goes back to Uli Hoeneß. At some point, this was many, many years ago. I think probably in the eighties or nineties. There was some there was some talk about contracting the Bundesliga because there were too many games, and they were thinking about about uh, 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 reducing it to sixteen teams. And Uli Hoeneß famously said that. Teams like Bochum really didn't have a place, <laughs> and uh, of course there was an out there was an outcry, and he had to apologize. And you know but, what's uh, funny about that? In in the late nineties and early two thousands, there was a push to increase it to twenty teams. Uh, yeah, I guess like, uh, just to get uh, more to get more clubs in the top flight to, for money. It's always a, it's always uh, Uli Hernes also famously Uli Hernes also famously wanted to. Uh, extend the halftime break to 20 minutes because he said extra five minutes would increase in 200,000 euros of sausage sales or something like that. So, mm. <laughs> so that's early Hernandez for you. The dude <laughs> uh, has a big mouth. So much so it's sent him to jail for five years. Or 15, 15 minutes, uh, not enough to eat a sausage. 20 minutes, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely in. No question about it. Yeah. How I mean, did he pitched it? The Buddhist just denied this, it. They're like, oh. how did he? I wonder how this was know. determined. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, it makes no, I don't know. He had his numbers out. He had his numbers. He had his research. There was a oh. sausage research firm. I don't know. But that's if, I have really five extra, it? if I have five extra minutes, <laughs> I'll have another sausage. <laughs> I think maybe the thought is like people were. The, the, I don't I don't know what the thought is because like people just go buy a sausage and then miss the five minutes of the game that happens all the time, right? But anyway, um, so Bochum plays Bayer Leverkusen next week, and Bayer Leverkusen, despite their four nil shellacking of Real Betis midweek, they're on a three game. They were on like a four game un winning streak. That's not the right yeah, term, but they been... lost three and tied one. There've been a little bit of a skid by Bayer Leverkusen. Yeah, they've really they were looking very good early and then they really haven't been lately. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Maybe maybe I Bayer don't know. Leverkusen's, Are we going to uh, coach is on the hot seat? I think maybe we're Maybe it's we're... time for them to uh to hire um Greg Vanny or something. Need to get another American in there and <laughs> about the Greg sort of Vanny. Coach. Oh, you know what? Wow. Bob Bradley's contract is up. Maybe Bob Bradley will go coach Bayer Leverkusen, which I would pay serious he, money to go see. Is he allowed in Europe again? <laughs> Bob Bradley. I, I I think his ban is slowly <laughs> rescinding. Much like my ban on the MLS subreddit. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way around that. There is a way around um, that. All right, cool. Uh, and then anything else in Germany other than we got the national team break coming up? 
Yeah, uh, like I, I said, Yom Nemeka gets the call up. Four the, goalkeepers, uh, which is weird to me. Burt Leno does not play at Arsenal anymore, which I must have missed. Burt Leno is the second choice keeper at Arsenal. Do you know that? Yeah, Aaron Aaron Ramsdale is uh, has has replaced him, and he is clearly better. I hate to say. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Burt Leno, like Ethan Horvath, needs to find a new club. He's been so, Rams, but, uh, Ramsdale's been great, so he's not going to get that spot back easily. No, well, I'm good for Ramsdale and good for Arsenal because they need all the help they can get. But Bert Leno might have to find his way out, but he still finds himself with the German national team despite not getting minutes at Arsenal. Yeah, why do they have four keepers? I guess Kevin Trapp was injured and now he's back and and Yogi. Kevin Trapp? Have... Yeah, maybe just to... But they only have two games, I think. they got Yogi, Yogi, doesn't, Yogi doesn't want anyone to feel left out. <laughs> Not Yogi. Hansi what am I talking Hansi. about? Hunzi. Oh, my God. I'm yeah. living in the past. Yogi's yes. gone. Yogi left a few months ago. That is yeah, it. Well, but, but in uh, your defense, he's like the co- he was the coach for 100 years or whatnot. But, I mean, these games are not really yeah. they're already qualified. They're not really counting. So, <laughs> this is if you're going to try something out, yeah. this is the time. Yeah, there's not they much are to touch on. Uh, they're going to play Young Nemeka, and, and they got two soft games. It's Liechtenstein, and I believe, uh, is it Armenia? It's Armenia, I think, yeah. I think Armenia is yeah, the last yeah. one that looked at some point like it when Armenia was doing well, it looked like this could be a big game, but now our, everything is already uh, decided as far as Germany is concerned. So this is, I mean, this is the time to experiment because there isn't really, there aren't really a lot of friendlies on the schedule between yep. Nations League and all the qualifying. And so this is just an opportunity to give people a chance. And so... And yeah. the World Cup is less than a year out now or around a year out now. It starts this time next year. So, you know, it's it's the clock is ticking. You only got a year out.